So in 2023, I got the chance to travel quite a bit with my flute. One of them was across borders. So I thought I would share with you guys how I do it, what do I pack in my bag, what kind of bag I get, all that type of stuff. And hopefully it can help you as you travel with your flute. So the first big problem is finding a bag that is not too big, but is big enough to put your flute in its flute case inside of it. What you'll find, especially if you have a B foot joint, is that the entire length of the case, including the inside case and the outside soft case, usually ends up being around 19 inches. So it looks like on camera that this case is not actually 19 inches long, but it actually bulges out on the side quite a bit. And in total, it is about 19 inches. Because of this, I find that most backpacks are just a hair too short to stick your flute in comfortably. What I have found that works though is a carry-on size travel backpack. They are very square, so they fit more in there. And when you bring it to like a rehearsal or if you just straight up travel with it, you can open it up like a regular suitcase. You see how it just fits in there super comfortably. There is a little bit of room to spare actually on each side, even if you put it in completely lengthwise. Next, if you need it, is a foldable music stand. This is the smallest one I own. This one is thicker than your typical wire metal stands. I like it because it's way sturdier, but it's also not crazy thick and crazy heavy that you can't also fit it in your carry-on bag. Then of course, I bring my Hercules flute stand. Some of you may recognize this. I still carry it around in this Hello Kitty bag. I don't know, can you tell? I'm kind of into Hello Kitty. It fits really nicely in there, kind of keeps it segregated from everything else in my bag. Very easy to find because it is very light pink as opposed to the black carry-on. If you are playing the piccolo though, make sure that you bring a stand that has a piccolo peg. This one is the slightly bigger Hercules stand. So you can put your telescoping peg on the main middle leg and then on one of the other legs you can put your piccolo peg. It's good stuff. This is heavy, sturdy, but also doesn't take up too much room in your bag. Next I wanted to talk about the actual case itself. This is a Weissman French style flute case. Now instead of laying your flute into the case, this suspends the flute. So you'll see here that this piece actually tucks into this little piece right here. It's held in place on this side. This foot joint is actually held up. It's a little foam peg right here that will actually suspend your foot joint there. And then you also have on this side a little insert for you to insert the tenon of the body of your flute. And then you can tuck the neck on the other side right in place and the whole flute is suspended. So I know this looks really, really scary, but you can actually go like this and the flute does not fall out. So this type of case is extremely useful for traveling. It does protect the flute more, prevents the flute from being kind of like rattled around. Is this style of case an absolute must? No, even I wasn't actually going to buy this case for myself until I could justify it. I never could truly justify it because I don't actually travel with my flute that often, but it ended up being gifted to me. Next day, Joanna popping in to add an extra tip. If you know that you are taking your flute through TSA at the airport, one thing that I really recommend is to put a sign on the top of your case that says this side up. You can also put a sign on the other side that says, please turn over or this side down, something like that, so that when the TSA agent opens up your case, that they don't open it upside down. All right, back to the video. And of course, if you need to bring your piccolo with you, make sure you pack your piccolo as well. Now for our cleaning accessories. Microfiber polishing cloth to wipe down the outside of your flute. I particularly like this one that came with my Nagahara Mini. I know this looks redundant, but I do use the Flute Center's branded polishing cloth as well, but not to polish the flute. They actually showed me kind of behind the scenes one time that they use this to blot pads. It works really well. Currently, I bring the whole thing with me. I really should just snip off 
a corner of it and just use a tiny bit of it. The reason why I use this now and not the BG microfiber pad blotter is because I lost that one. I lost it at the Jasmine Choi concert that I got to play in last year in about May. So yeah, that one's gone. It is bye-bye. I have no idea where it is. So I'm just using this right now. And then of course you're cleaning rod and swab. Now this one is a very exciting new one that I am trying out. It is made by just another flute guy here on YouTube. He's a longtime subscriber and he and his mom came out with this design. There will be a full review on this swab coming out soon. Now these next items, you don't have to have them. I just bring them with me because I have spoiled myself and I really enjoy using them. So the first one is the flute flag. I have the takedown flute flag. This was the one that was made by Roger Holman, who no longer makes these, but you can find very similar ones by Valentino. It's a great way to swab out your flute without taking apart the entire flute when you're in the middle of a rehearsal or a practice session or even a concert. And then we have the piccolo flag. A piccolo flag is a non-negotiable for me now, but you can just use a piccolo sized cleaning rod and a piccolo sized cleaning swab. Make sure they are small and piccolo sized, otherwise it's gonna get stuck. However, I actually just rely 100% on the piccolo flag for all of my piccolo swabbing. It does the job. And here we have the fix it tool. This one is really interesting. This came in the Flute Center swag bag or one of the Flute Center swag bags when I went to get my COA multiple times with them. On one side, it's basically like a little pick that allows you to push springs back into place in case they come out of place on your flute. On the other side, just your regular flat screwdriver. Very useful for screwing in any loose screws during an emergency. I personally love the fact that this little fix-it tool is so tiny, very thin, so it's really easy to just zip it up into your case. And now for sheet music. I have converted to using a tablet and a Bluetooth music pedal. This one is by a random company named, no joke, not Legato, but Legato. <laughs> I also like that this pedal is rechargeable using USB. A lot of these types of pedals, surprisingly, are not rechargeable via USB, so this is particularly convenient. Also, the pedals do not click. That is very important if you are going to be using this in a concert. Make sure that your tablet is always charged up and you don't forget to bring a tablet pen. Also all charged up or at least does not have dying batteries. I personally use mobile sheets on the tablet. It also works on my desktop. It's really fantastic because I only need one account and it works for both. It's just that it stores sheet music locally on your device, so keep that in mind. If you're using an iPad, Fourscore is the way to go. It's a tried and true sheet music app. If you're going completely old school, which I personally was doing as late as last May, May 2023, you can either use a folder like this. I like to use one with the zipper. I have shown this in a video before, but I don't really recommend it because I have had accidents with this. Sometimes your sheet music can fall out. You press on the side here and then it just like, bounces all your music right off of your music stand. It's a bad time. The only reason why I particularly like these types of folders is because it is tall enough for those like awkwardly large sheet music that you sometimes get when your ensemble rents parts. Instead, what I suggest is if you can, hole punch your music and put it in a binder. It will not fall off. It won't go everywhere. You can put little tabs on your music as well so you can flip to them really easily. If you're going to go this route, make sure you bring a pencil and an eraser. Do not use pen because you have to be able to erase your markings, especially if you're marking directly on a rented part. For tuners or metronomes, personally, I like to keep it simple. I like to just use them right on my phone. My personal favorite metronome is metronome beats, but only because I heavily rely on the ball motion mechanic. My favorite tuning app is TE Tuner. It is an incredibly 
powerful tuner. You can do a lot of stuff with this. This particular video is not meant to review TE tuner, so I'm not gonna get into all of the specifics, but definitely it is worth the, I think like five bucks that it costs well worth your money. It's insane how much this thing can do. As you can see, there is a metronome here as well. And I actually just discovered that there are different modes. That's so cool, isn't it? What the heck? This is definitely your ball motion. If you're traveling across your country's borders, I do recommend bringing two documents. For the sake of my own privacy, so I don't accidentally dox myself or anything like that, I'm not gonna show it on camera. But the first document is the original paid invoice for your instrument, just to prove that you own it. The second document you need only really applies if you are in a situation like mine. I was living in Vancouver, Canada when I ordered my professional flute from Massachusetts USA. So because of that, there was an import fee when it crossed the border. So I kept that receipt that says that we paid the import duties. So I have those documents with me in my bag, most of the time in my actual flute case. I actually just put it underneath the case inside. I've never actually been forced to prove my ownership of my instrument or even to prove that I paid the import duties. I don't know why, I, I think I just got lucky, but I'm still not gonna take my chances. I am always bringing these documents with me. I also have these documents uploaded to a personal Google Drive folder so that I can pull it up and show a customs officer if I really need to. Now for a few kind of optional things. I'm going to guess most of you guys need water. I highly suggest that you get a water bottle with a lid that has a locking mechanism. This is extremely useful to prevent accidents. You don't wanna bathe your flute, I'm just saying. And next is this. I have talked about this before in one of my videos about my setup when I teach. I still use this, it's the same one. This is a memory foam butt pad. This has been such a lifesaver when I went to orchestra rehearsals where we had to sit on hard metal chairs. The whole reason why I got this is because I was jealous of the other musicians who had butt pads and they look so comfy on their booties and I wasn't. So I bought it for myself and I've been using it ever since. I also use this for long drives. I've used this on the plane. And lastly, this is only optional if you're only playing the flute. If you are playing the piccolo, I would say this is required. Earplugs. I like using the Loop Experience Plus earplugs. This was recommended by one of my students who worked in a very loud environment, but he still needed to hear people talking. So he recommended these. These are high fidelity musicians earplugs. The thing that I love the most about these Loop Experience Plus earplugs is that they come in so many sizes, extra small to like large, I think. It not only comes with these typical silicone earbud style tips, but it also comes in foam tips in that same package for even more sound reduction. It also comes with little inserts that you can put into the loop part that also adds to even more sound reduction. My only complaint about these is that the case was way too small. I can't show it to you because I also lost that one. That one is on an Air Canada plate or maybe in the trash by now. So instead I keep it in my Meze earbud case. There is a little mesh pocket on one of the sides here. So I put it right in there and it stays nice and secure. And there you have it. That's how I travel with my flute. Let me know if you guys have any must haves that you have to bring with you in the comments below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.